Your PlayStation 3 has some hidden superpowers that you and I are about to unlock together. Through the power of Webman, you'll be able to play your PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1, and even PlayStation Portable backups in just a matter of minutes. Fire up your PlayStation 3 and your PC, you're about to learn something new. An important note here, if you have a PlayStation 3 fat or slim running custom firmware, you can play all of the games listed here. If your PlayStation 3 is running HEN instead, you can still play PS3 and PS1 games. This is due to game encryption issues that are beyond the scope of this basic getting started guide. To use Webman on your PlayStation 3, obviously you have to download, wait for it, Webman. It's hosted on the GitHub and linked for you in the video description. Scroll down on the GitHub page until you see the Assets section. Near the bottom of the Assets section, you'll see a link for the Webman Mod Installer package file. Click to download it to your computer. You'll need a USB flash drive formatted in FAT32 format to copy Webman over to your PlayStation 3. If your USB flash drive is larger than 32GB, you'll need a tool like GUI Format to format it in FAT32. It's linked for you in the video description. Just click the large picture right in the center of the website to download the software. To move your content over to your PlayStation 3, we'll use File Transfer Protocol, or FTP for short. I like FileZilla for this task because it's free and easy to use. Click the green Download button in the center of the web page. You'll see a listing for a free version of FileZilla here. Click the Download button at the bottom of this column to grab the latest version. From your Windows desktop, open the Downloads folder inside File Explorer. You'll see the Installer Executable file for FileZilla here. Double-click on this file to start the installation process, and at the UAC prompt, click Yes to continue. It's a straightforward install except for one thing. Slow your roll for a moment and make sure to either accept or decline the installation of the AVS Secure Browser during the installation process of FileZilla. Once the install is complete, uncheck the option to automatically launch FileZilla. We'll come back to it in just a moment. For now, just click Finish to close the installer. You can delete the installation file out of your Downloads folder as you won't need it any longer. Next up, let's prep your USB drive for use with your PlayStation 3. Insert the drive into your computer, make note of the drive letter assigned to your USB storage device by Windows, and then close out the File Explorer window for the drive. Navigate to the GUI Format Executable file inside your Downloads folder and double-click on it. Then at the UAC prompt, click Yes. Important note here, make sure you close out any open windows for File Explorer before attempting to use GUI Format. Take a look at the top left corner of the GUI Format interface. Right underneath the word Drive, there's a drop-down. Be sure to select the correct drive letter that corresponds with the USB drive you just plugged into your computer. Once you've selected the correct drive letter, click Start, and at the confirmation prompt, click OK. Once the FAT32 formatting process is complete, click Close in the bottom right corner of the window to close out GUI format. Now that your USB drive is formatted, open your Downloads folder, and you can either archive the GUI format software or delete it from your computer. Remembering, of course, it's still archived in your recycle bin. Let's get Webman copied over to your USB storage drive. I'm going to move the File Explorer window for downloads over to the left side of the desktop. I'll remove the USB drive and then just plug it right back in to activate the File Explorer window for the USB storage drive. I've brought it over to the right side of the screen here. Now all you have to do is just drag and drop Webman mod right onto the root of your USB storage. Now you can remove the USB drive from your computer Delete the Webman Mod package file from your Downloads folder and close out any open instances of File Explorer on your computer. Insert the USB drive into the rightmost USB port on your PlayStation 3 system. If you have a PlayStation 3 with custom firmware, turn the system on. If you have a PlayStation 3 that runs PS3 HEN, turn the system on and enable HEN. No matter which PS3 model and firmware you're using, from the cross media bar, scroll over to the right to get to the Game tab. From here, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the Game tab and you'll find the Package Manager. Select it with the X button. In the submenu that appears, use the D-pad to scroll down to Install Package Files and select it with X. In the next submenu, scroll down to Standard with the D-pad and select it with X. You'll see the package file for Webman Mod here. Press X to install the package file to your PlayStation 3. I normally gloss over installation setup bars like this one, but I just want to point out to you, if it looks like it's gotten stuck at about 40% or so, just leave it be and let it do its magic. It will resume the process and complete all the way to 100% in just a moment. See what I mean? Everything's good to go. Once the installation process is complete, you'll see a confirmation message on screen. Press the circle button to go back to the cross media bar. You're done with the USB drive. You can now remove it from your PlayStation 3. Back at the cross media bar, what you've actually installed at this point is the setup installer for Webman Mod, not Webman Mod itself. Scroll down to the installer, 
Press and hold the left 1 button on your PlayStation 3 controller and press the X button. This installs the full version of Webman to your PlayStation 3. During the installation process, your PlayStation 3 will restart and return to the cross media bar. If you scroll up just a little bit in the game tab, you'll see that there's a new listing there called Webman Games. Trouble is, there aren't any games in there because we haven't copied them over yet. Let's fix that. Press and hold the select button on your PlayStation 3 controller. This opens up the Webman on-screen menu. This reveals two important things to you. The first one is that the FTP service is up and running on your PlayStation 3, and the other is the IP address for your system. Take note that your IP address is likely different than the one that you see on screen. With your IP address in hand, head back over to your computer. Let's take a look at the type of contents that you can copy over and the format that's required for each type of content. I'm going to load up a folder here called Demo that I have pre-staged. In this folder, I already have PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation Portable content. For PS1 games to run correctly, they should be in BinQ format. For all other types of content, including PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation Portable, they should be in .iso format. Okay, now that you know what we can install to the PlayStation 3, let's get your PlayStation 3 and your PC talking to each other over FTP. From your Windows Start menu, locate and launch FileZilla. I'm sure you've noticed by now that both the PlayStation 3 and the computer in this video are both set up with dark themes. But when you start FileZilla, it starts in light mode. And with the free version, there's no way inside the software to set this to dark mode. However, if you want to use a dark mode theme with FileZilla, here's a great workaround. Press the left alt key, left shift key, and print screen key all at the same time. This opens up Windows High Contrast Mode. At the on-screen confirmation, click on Yes, and FileZilla will be in dark mode. There's still one problem though, you won't be able to read anything. To fix this, just close FileZilla, go back to Windows Start, and relaunch FileZilla. Once FileZilla is back up and running, you'll be able to see the files and folders on your computer in the left pane. In this case, it's the demo folder that contains the game folders and files. To connect your PlayStation 3 and your computer over FTP, take a look at the top left corner of this window. Click here and enter the IP address that was provided to you by Webman for your PlayStation 3. You don't need a login ID or password, but you will need to enter port 21 in the port section as shown here. Once you have all of this information entered, click on Quick Connect to connect your PS3 and your computer together. You'll see a confirmation box appear on screen. Click the OK button near the bottom right corner of the box to continue. A list of storage locations on your PlayStation 3 will appear in the right pane. In the right pane, locate the listing that says Dev HDD0 and double click on it. If you take a look at the folder structure, you'll find that Webman has created folders for all four types of content that it can use. PlayStation 1, PlayStation Portable, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 2. This will make it an easy drag and drop job to move this stuff from your computer over to your PlayStation 3. So we'll tackle these one at a time. I'll grab the PlayStation 1 content and drag it to the PSX.ISO folder, the PlayStation 2 content and drag and drop it to the PS2 ISO folder, drag and drop the PlayStation Portable content to the PSP ISO folder, and the PlayStation 3 content to the PS3 ISO folder. Take a look at the bottom left corner of FileZilla. You'll see a listing here for queued files, which are the files that are waiting to be transferred over, the number of successful transfers, and any failed transfers. Once all of your game files have been copied over to your PlayStation 3, you'll see a confirmation message pop up in the bottom right corner of the screen. You're done with FileZilla, you can go ahead and close it out by just clicking the red X in the top right corner of the window. Quick reminder, if you previously turned on high contrast mode, press left alt, left shift, and print screen to turn it off. Back at your PlayStation 3's cross media bar, press and hold the select button on your controller to close out the Webman pop-up menu. Your games have been copied over to your internal hard drive, but Webman doesn't know they're there yet. Here's how to fix that. Navigate to Webman Games and press X. The only choice you'll have at this submenu is Webman Setup. Select it with the X button. From the list of choices here, use the D-pad to scroll down to the listing for Refresh, Webman Games, and XMB, and select it with the X button. This will take you back to the cross media bar and it will automatically restart Webman. Once Webman comes back up, go back up to Webman Games and select it with the X button. You'll see menu choices now for each one of the systems for which you copied over content. Each one of these has its own unique considerations for launching the content, so let's look at them one at a time. First slugger up to the plate is PlayStation 3. I'll select this folder with the X button, and you'll see that the game Tron Evolution is listed here. I'll select it with the X button, and the disc will be virtually loaded and automatically started. PlayStation 3 games load up with no further considerations before launching the game. They are PlayStation 3 games and natively supported on the system after all. 
PlayStation 2 games are a little different. You see, PlayStation 3 games save their data natively to a hard drive, but PlayStation 2 save natively to a memory card. Fortunately, the first time you attempt to load a PlayStation 2 game, if you don't have a virtual memory card set up on your PS3, it will prompt you to do this. To get started with setting up a virtual PS2 memory card, select Yes with the X button. Then at the confirmation prompt, select OK with the X button to continue. This will take you back to the cross media bar and automatically take you to the submenu for Create New Internal Memory Card. Select it with X and select Internal Memory Card PS2 with the X button. You can choose to assign a custom name to your memory card or just scroll down and select OK with X. You'll get an on-screen confirmation that the internal memory card has been created and assigned to slot number one. Press the circle button to go back to the game tab inside the cross media bar. From here, use the D-pad to scroll down several times until you see a listing that says PlayStation 2 Format Disk. That entry was automatically created when you selected your PlayStation 2 content inside the PS2 folder of Webman Games. Press X on PlayStation 2 Format Disk and you'll be off to the races, memory card included. For PlayStation 1 games, it didn't give the option to me to automatically set up a memory card, so you'll need to do this manually. Scroll up in the Game tab until you see the listing for Memory Card Utility and select it with the X button. At the submenu that appears, select Internal Memory Card with X, and at the next submenu, select Create New Internal Memory Card with X. This time, scroll down with the D-pad to Internal Memory Card PS and select it with the X button. Once again, you'll have the choice to name your card with a custom name or just select OK with X to continue, which is what I'll do in this case. The PS1 is a little different than the PS2 with memory cards. It will create the memory card, but it does not automatically assign it to a slot. Here's how you do that. First, press the circle button on the controller to go back to the cross media bar. You'll see a listing for your newly created PS1 memory card. Press the triangle button to pull out a side cart menu. You'll see a menu item here called Assign Slot, select it with X. Then you can assign the card to slot 1 or slot 2, whichever you choose. In this case, I'll assign it to slot 1 with X. Now that you have your memory card assigned, press the circle button to go back to the game tab in the cross media bar. Scroll down through the listings to go back to Webband Games. Press the X button at Webband Games, locate the PS1 folder, press the X button, and locate your content inside the PS1 folder. In this case, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Select your content with the X button to launch it. To me, Castlevania Symphony of the Night just never gets old. PlayStation Portable games also have their unique considerations for loading and launching them. First, select Webman Games with the X button, then select Webman Setup from inside the submenu. From the list of setup choices, use the D-pad to scroll almost all the way down to the bottom, and you'll see a listing here that says Update Webman Mod. Select that with the X button to continue. Inside this menu, scroll down one time with the D-pad until you see the listing for add-ons and select add-ons with the X button. There are two different kinds of launchers you can install here. The first one is called PSP Minis Launcher. Select it with the X button to install it. Once it's installed, press the circle button to go back to the cross media bar. To grab the other launcher, press X for Webman Games, X for Webman Setup. Once again, scroll almost all the way down to the bottom until you get to Update Webman and select it with the X button. Scroll down in the submenu to Add-ons and select it with X. Scroll down one listing this time to get to PSP Remasters Launcher. Select it with the X button to install this package file. Once it's installed, press the circle button to go back to the cross media bar. To launch your PSP content, press X for Webman Games. Inside the Webman Games menu, scroll down to the PSP folder and select it with X. Find the PSP game you want to load, in this case, Parappa the Rapper, and select it with the X button. You have to think of Webman as a disk loader and not a disk launcher, because what happens here is it loads the disk but does not automatically launch it. In this instance, you'll need to press circle several times to go back to the game tab of the cross media bar. You'll see a listing here for PSP Launcher. If you scroll down to it, you'll see the game that you've selected highlighted here, in this case, Parappa the Rapper. When you press the X button to load your game, you'll see two icons here you can choose from. Select the one on the left for PSP Remasters Launcher with the X button. And in no time at all, you'll be wrapping your way to the top of the charts and into the heart of the lovely Sunny. There are a lot of great games to enjoy this way, but there's one thing that you're missing out on, and it would let you play tens of thousands of your favorite classic games in just a matter of minutes. Check out this video shown on screen and linked in the video description and pinned comment to learn how to set up RetroArch on your PlayStation 3. I can't wait to see you over there.